Hey, how's everybody doing on this fine preparation morning? I tell you what, I'm just so thankful, okay? I'm in the heat of battle. My family, all my children, we're all in the heat of battle. And um, I just count it all joy because God is good. So, you know, I'm reading in the book of Revelations, and I'm just kind of recording my way through that a little bit. Just, just, uh, just for my children and my grandchildren, and the rest of y'all are collateral blessing out there, and I love you all. Thank you. Um, so to this morning, you know, I feel the Spirit pull me over here. I'm over here in Matthew 12. And uh, I guess I need to hear this this morning. So I'm going to meditate on this and share it with y'all too. So here we go. Matthew 12, I'm going to pick it up over here at verse 31. It says, Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. You hear that? There's hope. Okay, there's hope. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. So no blaspheming the Holy Ghost, guys. That's for sure. 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world, neither in the world to come. So there's a new world coming. There sure is. 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. You hear that? That's pretty simple to understand right there. So when you walk up to an apple tree, you know it's an apple tree, right? What do people see when they walk up to you? What do they see when they walk up to you? See, that's the question we have to ask ourselves. What kind of tree are we? Because we've been grafted into the vine. You see how all this is all agriculturally based? I say that all the time. This whole book is agriculturally based in faith and works. That's right, faith and works. What are we reading about? The works of faithful men. What are we reading about? The works of unfaithful men. That's pretty simple to understand. Verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, see there, that's what we've been reading about over in Revelations. The heart of a man. The mouth speaks. So out of the abundance of a heart, out of a man's heart, the mouth speaks. So what are you talking about all the time? See, these are just clues. These are clues to help us sift ourselves so that this word can set us apart and sanctify us, just like it says it will. If we follow it, read it and follow it. It's really that simple. 35. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the treasure bringeth forth evil things. So see, this is where I need some help. I need y'all to pray for me. I'm, I guess I have trouble looking for the good in things. You know, I'm constantly seeing the bad, and I'm sure my brothers at one point in, in time in your faith you've been here where I'm at. My older brothers I'm talking to now, right now, okay? And probably some younger brothers out there, too, you know, that that, that, that know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, uh, but I'm, I just know there's hope because I am attentive to my own heart. I am attentive to my own walk and my own faith and my own relationship with my God, our God. And, and I spend time in His Word and meditate on it every day, all day. And I have for a very long time now, praise God. Have I done it perfectly? I'm ashamed to say, no, I haven't done it perfectly. But I'm hung on with a kung fu grip. You make no mistake, and I ain't letting go. Despite myself. That's just the way it's going to be. I don't care. <laughs> because I love God, and that's why I say that. I love God. 
and his word is right, and I am wrong. <laughs> Make no mistake about that. So let's get back to reading his word. <laughs> 37. Oh, wait a minute. 36. Let's read that one first. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Now, see, I've been talking about this with my family for about a week now. And, uh, and I've really been trying to watch my idle words, too, you know, because you get to cutting up with your buddies or your acquaintances, right? Because we are alien in this world. But you guess it just really depends on who you allow yourself to be around because that's usually the heart of the matter. So... I hang out with Jesus every day, all day. <laughs> so he says right here, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by words you shall be justified, and by words you shall be condemned. So it's words. They're going to justify us, and it's words that's going to condemn us. So I think it pays heed for us to pay attention to our words. What was coming out of our mouth. Now all these letters are in red. I'm going to show you my Bible every now and again in my Bible studies. You see that letter all there in red? So that's the king talking. We need to be listening to what he's saying to us. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from you? Hmm. So now they hear his words. They're pricked in their hearts. They want to believe him. But now they want to see a sign, just to, just to make sure, man, let's see a sign. What's he say? He says, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Hmm, what Jonas do? <laughs> let's read about it. 40. For as Jonas was three days... And three nights in the whale's belly. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Praise you, Father God. Thank you. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, pay heed, children. Pay heed. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Did you hear me? You can't play games with this. You either have to grab a hold of this and you got to hang on to it for dear life despite yourself. And the minute you find yourself in error, you got to correct it. That's what this word just said to us this morning. So children, I pray you listen up and do exactly what this word is telling you to do. Y'all have a good day.